I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. All right, everybody, welcome back. Uh, appreciate you sticking around and I uh, hope that uh, conversation uh, you find some of some value. Uh, okay, let's let's move to a couple other things. So this this little bit of a breaking announcement that at least, you know, I don't know, it's, it's, it's kind of silly, but I, I couldn't help but um, let me pull this thing up here. Cause I had to, I had to reach out to my, my, my dear brother and, and, and share a bit of disagreement, but, uh, <laughs> so the good folks at reality speaks here uh, up the road here in Baltimore are, are hosting, uh, this event. And because I'm on the list serve have been a supporter of theirs for, for many, many years, uh, done several events with them support brother Jabari uh in his work for a long time uh I, I i did have to send a little note and suggest that that i you know i i disagree uh and that uh in particular uh, uh boyce watkins is his analysis and argument is problematic so discussing him as or presenting him as somebody who uh one should pay for uh, now, I know Soul Vivers Nation raises money and they do collective community work. So it's not, you know, some strict money grab. But I know some of that is also to pay. Uh, I'm sure at least I don't have proof, but I'm sure that some of that is to pay Watkins, who doesn't do stuff for free. Uh, um, whereas some. You know, allegedly behind the scenes. Uh, refuse payment for such events and have that money redirected back to the organization or to 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 other uh, more in need uh, uh, guests. Um, you know, this is this is being charged. This is this is costing folks some money to be told. You know about developing the business mentality, because of course, key to uh, uh, Watkins' argument is that that we just lack a mentality uh $50 in advance 60 at the door uh i mean that's deep anyway so i just voiced my my disagreement and and suggested that this is not you know healthy politically or economically or otherwise for 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 his audience and uh uh that uh the and and then he asked me, so you don't think it's important that we start businesses? And I said, no, it's not. And then I sent him my favorite, my new favorite statistic and invited him to get more. So I will invite him to get more. But but that that since 2000, from 2000, from 1992 to 2012, black people created more than two million jobs, two million businesses, rather. And yet captured their capture of the total national revenue spent went down to what it is now, 0.3%. This is not about a black business mentality. This is about business and capitalism not being a solution. It's about that again, we need political power, not economic power. By the way, to this extent, I disagree even uh, up to a point with with uh, and I saw her interview again with with uh, Brother Sundiata. I hope you check that show out. Dr. Jessica Gordon Emhard. Uh, I to a certain extent, well, up to that point, disagree with her argument as well. This is not about we don't have enough cooperatives and credit unions. Uh, this is about political power which is the only real determinant of what wealth is, how it's created and how it's distributed. So for me, any discussion of banking, credit union or otherwise, business development, uh, cooperatives or otherwise is not a, is not a, a, a path uh, that, that, that should be primary in our work. 
uh, in the uh, overall attempt to assume political power, if we're creating cooperatives and collectives and whatever in the process, fine. If we're supporting certain business ventures in the process of, uh, 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 I, I don't know exactly how that would work, but in some sort of process of, of, of moving towards achieving political power, fine. But uh, uh, this as the solution, and you know, this is just, and I, I mean, he's demonstrating his business model, by the way get black people to pay me to tell them to 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 encourage that they engage in a process that i myself cannot engage in have not engaged in to accumulate to accumulate wealth <laughs> my business model is selling the myth to you then 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 clearly the myth can't create wealth for for you or your community but uh, I mean, it's it's so. So anyway, my point is, uh, Brother Jabari has, has has invited me to, quote, stay tuned uh, because he said he he's going to try to set up a debate between me and Boyce Watkins. I said he has already refused such an opportunity. So I'm told. Uh, and then he said he's going to find someone else to debate me. So I just said, please uh, do me the honor of reading my work first uh because apparently i don't i don't think my my dear brother has has granted me that honor at this point and uh, uh and then let's 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 certainly um if someone wants to debate i'm here let's let's have that debate um yeah so but right on time Right on time uh, for that update. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody who has done me the honor of reading the work and helping. Uh, we've now crossed 75,000 downloads of the book. Uh, I don't know how many have been sold in hard copy, and uh, but I'm assuming that we're that puts that has to be if you if it's seven chapters, 75,000. That means if someone's downloading the whole book by chapter, that's roughly 10,000 copies plus. I think that's pretty good. Um, given, again, the the relative uh, uh, lack of attention in spaces, I would have I would have thought uh, there would have been some. But um, anyway, but I definitely appreciate that. And, and I and I you know look forward to more discussion and debate uh, and critique. I mean, the book is not perfect. Uh, every time I look at it and we're reading it for a class this semester, I find things that I would, you know, like, ugh, could have done a little better with that, could have fixed that up a little bit. But uh, um, anyway, the argument uh, I stand by, the, 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 anyway, but the, you know, there are a couple stylistic things I could have, you know, anyway. Uh, but right on time, um, and uh, shout out to Dr. Uh, Todd Stephen Burroughs for um, helping to, uh, indirectly produced this program. He sent uh, this article that came out in the New York Times yesterday: "A City's Experiment in Black Capitalism," which is again uh, for 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 my dear brother Jabari and others in the world who want to keep you know, and the Boyce Watkins of the world who want to keep promoting this this idea of we have to um, engage in business, you know. Uh, uh, this article is just another another example of how black capitalism does not work. And essentially, and in fact, I think that my favorite summary is what I sent. Um, let me, I, in fact, I think I just want to read uh, what I sent to, to uh, Dr. Burroughs uh, in... Um, Oh man, that uh, <laughs> uh, so I was saying so so I'll, I'll clean up the language, but the unspoken message here is how can black capitalism work when its parent <clears throat> when its parent white capitalism fall fails above it? Kodak collapsed, and that's it. The hopes and dreams of black capitalism was a subsidiary to Kodak. Uh, so, and, and because, and I say that because what you see here in this story is a story of in Rochester, New York, the development of a black company, uh, coming that, that just like what's happening now in response to protests, 
the business community comes out and says, we we uh, uh, don't protest, don't struggle, don't organize for political power. What you need are jobs and business ownership, and we will help get involved. So this is the 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 example here, and I think it's important that they actually put black capitalism in its own set of quotation marks uh, because there is there is it it, it is um, an oxymoron of sorts. It's it's fictitious. Uh, of sorts. So what happens and what is described in this story is uh, in the emergence, in the aftermath of some some black power civil rights era protests, uh, the Kodak company comes in to Rochester, New York. Kodak and Xerox get together and they, they uh, uh, basically create a subsidiary, a black owned subsidiary in Rochester, New York. And as the article says here, uh, first of all, I thought it was interesting. They said today sitting in Mr. Jackson's office, there's a photo. And Mr. Jackson is is the head of uh, uh, um, well, the, the Panther Graphics printing plant sits along a row of red bricks in an empty parking lot uh, from a largely black neighborhood in the north of Rochester. Nearby is the warehouse, a Baptist church on the billboard that warns a shot from a gun can't be undone. The reference to Rochester's soaring murder rate. Tony Jackson, the owner of Panther Graphics, grew up here, the oldest of six children. His mother died when he was 13. His father served time in Attica, uh, the anniversary of which I think we're still endeavoring to, to pay some more tribute to here at BPM. Uh, uh, but Mr. Jackson said he was always had an ink in his blood and helped uh, a helpful trait in the city dominated by a giant film and copying companies Kodak and Xerox. And he found his calling in commercial printing. Mr. Jackson named his company, which produces labels for the grocery chain Wegmans and health care enrollment packets for Blue Cross Blue Shield after the Black Panther Party. It represents being black and being strong. Today, in Mr. Jackson's office, there's a photo of his son breaking a tackle of, uh, running back uh, Duke University, da 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 da. Uh, and the four men, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Nelson Mandela, and Barack Obama, gathered around the table smiling. So, so the contradictions there are, are, I would hope, need to be more apparent. <laughs> um, but despite whatever the issues are, there was a time, though, when Rochester was on the cutting edge of Black community capitalism. Again, an oxymoronic phrase an effort to create companies owned, staffed, and managed largely by Black people that could lift up the broader community. Just as giant corporations have pledged billions to help combat racism and support Black Americans in the wake of George Floyd's murder, please again see the previous video we did breaking that whole monstrosity down, uh, um, showing, as has already been reported, that, that, that the money is not coming, most of it. Uh, of the 50 billion, uh, 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 only 4 billion was disassociated from mortgages, investments, loans, all from the biggest banks. And uh, only a handful of that went to anything dealing directly with the, the, the struggles of black people in the community. Everything else was, you know, job training, financial literacy, silliness like that. But just as that was pledged after George Floyd's killing, Black Americans, the way uh, uh, corporate investments in Black businesses were seen as an antidote to racial unrest in the 1960s. So again, it's the same thing. The wide pro widespread protests throughout the country led to cor led corporate America to pledge billions of dollars in investments in Black-owned businesses to ramp up hiring of African Americans. But what this what this story shows is that. Yes, there was first a, 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 a black owned company that was developed out of the fight organization in Rochester. Uh, and the, the organization would be co come to be known as Fight On. And it would be uh, a, a, a subsidiary created by Xerox to do some of the contract work. Long story short, this went away.
as as both the as the uh, technology changed in the in, in society as Kodak and Xerox lost their their power positions in the economy in the business world, their ability to support the contracting work that went down to what was eventually renamed Ltrex because Fight On was seen as too controversial. Uh, that money dried up. And I highlighted Black Wall Street here because, you know, when they're when they're talking to to to, to uh, folks about this history, and they said when you hear folks burning down Black Wall Street, this stuff is real. There are people who are absolutely threatened by any kinds of success for black people. And they work to keep you again. Please go see our videos, several videos on the history of Black Wall Street, because, again, what they're what they're mythologizing here is just what was done with the mythologizing around Black Wall Street by reducing Black Wall Street. And I think, you know, honestly, I think in, in this discussion she just had with 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 on Sundiata's program, Dr. Gordon Emhart does something similar by focusing on almost exclusively the violence enacted by white vigilantes, which is not to be discounted, obviously. The broader issue of politics is ignored entirely. So as we talked about here, Black Wall Street ultimately was not destroyed by white vigilante violence. It was ultimately destroyed by political policy, by public policy, political power. And as is the case here with this story, black capitalism being a subsidiary of white capitalism, which doesn't work for even all white folks. So, so the point being, because remember, after Wall Street in 1921 was, was burnt down, it rebuilt and by the 1940s was even bigger and more powerful and was destroyed not by white vigilantes, but by white government public policy uh, that, that, for instance, created the highway that split the community, that, that you know, the, the shifts in the economy that saw the, the uh, oil producing economy of that, of the white owned oil producing economy, broadly speaking, in Oklahoma, lose its relevance and strength in the economy, which, again, as a trickle down to the black businesses that, that, that uh, worked to serve that economy, meant that they would lose and go out of business as well. So that's what it was. And the same thing happened here in this story of Rochester, New York. It wasn't to the point that that my brother Jabari and Boyce Watkins are pointing out to or attempting to point to. It wasn't that black people did not have the, the appropriate business mentality or ethic. It's that they were trapped within a capitalist economy, trapped within a white supremacist colonial in, environment that that uh, uh, structurally put limits on how big or what they could become as a company. And then ultimately, because they were beholden to a relationship with a bigger company that itself was put out of, at least if not business, was put out of its prominence in the economy, they were doomed. So again, it wasn't white vigilante violence that destroyed what happened in Rochester any more than it was white vigilante violence that destroyed what happened in Tulsa in Black Wall Street or anywhere else, as bad as that white vigilante violence is. It is the public policy. That is the problem. It is the absence of political power that is the problem that led to the destruction of these communities and business efforts. So people going around now and taking money from poor black people to tell them that they are financially illiterate and, they're, and, and not doing what they need to do in a business sense is in a sense not only hustling them, but hustling them twice because by paying you to be told bad financial advice, you are actually engaged in poor financial literacy. <laughs> it is financially naive, economically naive to pay someone to get bad economic advice that they themselves cannot follow and have not followed, that it does not work. By the way, uh, uh, whereas I don't agree with him politically, the, the, uh, a uh, video done by uh, Pocket Watching with JT about Jay Morrison, Boyce Watkins, and their failed collaboration of a couple of years ago around the Tulsa Fund is a very interesting and important video to probably for you to watch um, in that it gives a very detailed breakdown 
from just a, a, a straight laced economist or accountant's perspective, rather, uh, what financially was wrong and how that plan could not work and was just a money grab from within the black community. So we're coming at, you know, we have different politics, perhaps, but I am saying what what uh, 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 JT pointed out in the specifics of Boyce Watkins writ large, but also in terms of the specifics of, of Boyce Watkins, that the claim that the that that uh, black inequality economically has anything to do with some form of financial illiteracy or some form of uh, an absence of a of a business mentality is simply factually, historically, economically false. Uh, I look back and say I bit my tongue more than I wish I had bit my tongue. He added in a statement, a Xerox spokesperson said the company has spent millions over many decades supporting science programs for Rochester students and organizing mentorships and other volunteer activities to help close the poverty gap. That, of course, is exactly, again, what we just showed uh, uh, in one of the more recent videos. I'll put the link into this one as well. But but that that that's what was done most recently with that $50 billion corporate uh, in investment in closing the black racial gap, mentorships, volunteer activities, science programs, financial literacy programs that don't work. So as Mr. Augustine said, the former CEO of, of what would be renamed as Eltrex, that black subsidiary from, from Xerox and Kodak, Kodak, he said, but he often found that other companies were not sincerely interested in engaging black owned businesses, but only looking like they were. That he was not able to grow the company's customer base before he regretted not being able to grow the company's customer base before Xerox and Kodak began to struggle. How would you grow your customer base? Which is, again, the point I've been raising all along. You can't grow your customer base if you don't have not only the appropriate sales or support from a cut from customers, existing customers, but you don't have venture capital investment. You don't have the ability to expand to service those customers. And as a subsidiary of a, of a dying industry already, how would that happen? So as it says here, Kodak filed for bankruptcy in 2012. This is, again, analogous to what happened at the end of, of the second go-round with Tulsa uh, and, the, and the downturn of the oil economy, the white-owned oil economy, this, the, the parent you know, company, so to speak, of black capitalism there. While Xerox restructured its business, which resulted in a series of large of, of large layoffs at its Rochester facilities, uh, uh, Mr. Augustine said some of his Ultrex assets were sold and its employees transferred to Canon Industries. There were people back then who said, and they're saying right now, we have to get out of the street and into the boardroom. Our folk went into the boardrooms and we suffered, and that's where we are today. I think that's a great point. Dr. James Turner, I remember being in, in, in one of his classes in grad school, and he talked then about the inside and outside game. And we've he was even saying then, 20 plus years ago, we have put an overemphasis on the inside game. Everybody wants to do the inside game. I'm going to change it from within. I'm going to get a job and change it from within. I'm going to get a job within the state, change it from within. We don't need to be in the streets. We don't need to be organized. We don't need things like general strikes, which we should obviously be putting on the table at this point. We don't need any, we, we don't need to be doing any of that because we can set up a business. You can pay me to tell you to set up a business. And then we've, we've, we've lost that balance or to the extent there ever was a balance or, 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 the, or we've, we've developed a balance where there should be an imbalance and, and probably be, uh, you know, an overemphasis on, on the outside strategy. But we're not doing, but, but, and that's why we are where we are today. So, and that was it. I mean, it's, 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 uh, 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 you know, I think uh, a microcosmic look at what happens at any experiment in black capitalism. All of it is a subsidiary to the ability of larger businesses, white owned, to do well 
and offer some sort of trickle down kickback. And that's not that's not how wealth is built. That's not where wealth uh, how how wealth emerges. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like.